And meanwhile, Napsterman makes a great hand. You know, that, that's... Oh, boy. All right. The great... This is a great open, so I don't even think about playing the jack on the bottom. Of course, I'd much rather play the queen there. Right. Yeah, well, there's the flush. At this point, we're pretty committed to, this, to the straight flush. There's no point in making weak hands. You know, we're up against fantasy land, which is not never fouling and always a good hand. What do you have? I would get killed. So, based on some simulations I've been running, I've kind of learned that it's actually usually correct to make a three flush in my case. There's just so many different ways to go with the 10-8 of hearts. Putting the king there. Well, it certainly improves the hand on the bottom a little bit. It doesn't do so enough to prevent us from playing his head up top. And here, again, just assume we're making a straight or a flush from the bottom. You know, do we want to pair the deuce or play the four for the straight? Well, you know, more points with a four, but more likely to make two pair or better with a deuce. So, I, or the other way around. Well, I'm not even sure. The deuce is just the right move, despite the, the other deuce being dead. That's all I, that's all I wanted to say. Solid. Yeah, I don't even know how people play this game without four color decks. Am I really gonna do that move? I guess so, right? I mean, yeah, we're we're winning the middle, and look how many outs we have for the bottom. I mean, some of them are dead, of course, but you know, two tens, two eights, and two nines. That's six outs is pretty good. Even if in reality, maybe it's like one fewer. Much better than needing two hearts, even though we're probably going to get that. Yeah, so you see, we made it pretty easily. Pretty normal hand. Not too much drama, really. Other than that hope of the straight flush that didn't materialize. You know, that's why it's really hard to sort of say what the value of a, of a draw is, because I had three card open in the straight flush draw. And we ended up making two pair, and that was good enough. All right, anyway, let's play this hand. Let's see what we got. So there's a flush, and then jacks and tens, and threes. Okay, so we can play the jacks up top and the flush. That's promising. Unless we have trips, which we don't, that's kind of got to be the move, right? Ooh. We've also got two straights. But then that leads to nothing. Okay, so we want to play the jacks up top. And I think you see the two straights, but that doesn't really lead to anything. You know, even jacks up top is six points. That's as much as the full house on the bottom. So. You know, not a great hand, but pretty good. 10-point 10, 10 bonus. If we scoop, we get 16. Not too bad. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have made the flush there. I don't... Wow, it really worked out. Holy shit. What a good hand he had. And let's uh, do my favorite thing, which is defend against Fantasyland. So, weird, but straight flush. Can't help myself. Oh, man. Well, let's just do that. All right, got to improve two rows. You know, it seems weird, but maybe it is. But remember, our goal is to make fantasy land here. So, you know, a seven or a five, or possibly a monster. 
you know, when you're up against a good hand, you have to adjust your strategy. Against Spanish land, you know you're up against a good hand. Although in this case, not a good hand at all. But the point is, you're not, your opponent's never going to foul. And just that means you have to be a lot more aggressive. You know, just qualifying doesn't really do much. So, these kind of hands, I never know how to play. Um, I think this is okay. As long as we make trips or straight right away. So I'm going to roll with it. But, you know, it wouldn't shock me if, like, something like this was the best move, right? Or, or this. Um, I really don't know. Just not generally a fan of putting one card in the bottom. Probably just for historical reasons. Because then, like, regular, it never made any sense. Okay, so... Yeah, I mean, the the... The, the benefit of playing the three cards in the bottom like this is that we could just make a straight and not worry about it. But the downside is sometimes we get locked into a hand. Like here, we have no choice. We really need the ace. We're already basically playing as though we made the ace. I mean, look. I mean, I can sort of make two pair in the middle, but it's really hard. I need exactly a four and a five. So we are extremely committed to something. Yeah, like you see, I'd love to play that, right? Five in the middle, queen up top, but can't do it. Um, just we still have to put the queens, of course, because our opponent has a much better hand, and we gotta be aggressive. You know, you can sort of see how locking yourself up into something isn't great. All right, where's the ace? Oh man, the four is there. I'll take a a chance of three aces any time over one four. Just variance. I wish there's a lot in this game. Let's go. Maybe the last hand. And here, as I've shown before, might as well just play the jack right away. You know, it's not really blocking the queens too much. And if we get really lucky... Oh, there you go. Might even make trips. Who knows? Ah, can't have trips up top in every video. Try to, though. Nice defense there. Let's end on an up note. Hopefully something is interesting and uh, let's play some more different people and maybe get someone else's thoughts.